Investigating the cold, the researchers have found a block of ice that was framed quite a while back. When they cut it open, they found that the animal inside is alive. Individuals from a logical undertaking are leading unearthings in the icy desert in one of the caverns they find something uncommon in the ice. The ice block is painstakingly removed and joined to the helicopter. A short time later, the ice block is shipped over the snow-capped mountains to the logical research center. Afterward, researchers send a fax to their bosses wherein they report a significant fine of archaeological and anthropological importance. They are requested to acquit penetrating the area and send an expert to the lab to assist with researching the animal detained in a block of ice Dr. Stanley Shepard is shipped off the lab. He is an anthropologist and is right now leading his exploration in the icy, concentrating on the set of experiences, culture and customs of the nearby Eskimos because of the way that the specialist is frequently late at gatherings with the locals. His partners continually ridicule him and don't treat his work in a serious way. In the lab, Shepard is met by Dr. Diane Brady alongside a gathering of different researchers and educates him regarding the ancient find. To begin with, researchers conclude that they have tracked down a bear or another old creature. They say that not very far in the past, Russian specialists found a mammoth in the ice and its cells ended up being very reasonable. Researchers trusted that the animal they found is likewise safeguarded looking great, they intend to take a portion of its leftover living cells for additional review. The scientists fire a laser and cautiously layer by layer slice through the ice soon it turns out to be obvious to them that not a creature is detained in the block. In any case, the body of a mountain man inspecting the presence of the Neanderthal shepherd reasons that previously, the man might have been a tracker and lived on earth around 20,000 to a long time back. The anthropologist needs to investigate the fine yet doctor. Yet again Diana Brady alongside the other researchers plan to cut the Neanderthal into pieces and send it to the best exploration communities on the planet for study. Shepard requested that researchers examine the area of land where they found the Neanderthal on the grounds that a whole clan of cave dweller can be frozen in the ice. Notwithstanding, the hunt region can extend over 1000s of square miles, so he has denied further examination. An ancient man is thawed and deprived of his dress so that tissue tests can be taken for investigation, they give him a blood bonding and join terminals to screen mind action. During testing, researchers notice that all living Neanderthal cells are saved in amazing condition. Dr. Brady accepts that in the body of an old individual, there could be some sort of cryoprotectants that aided save his body from harm during freezing specialists kept on concentrating on the Neanderthal and in the process are shocked to see feigned wave movement in his cerebrum. They chose to attempt to restore the man and give him ampules of calcium and adrenaline, after which they utilize a defibrillator. The core of a Neanderthal starts to beat, and all researchers freeze completely still from the acknowledgement that their extraordinary disclosure will before long energize the entire world, Iceman awakens on a surgical table, encompassed by figures wearing careful covers, not understanding what's going on, he starts to overreact and every way under the sun evades an infusion with dozing pills. Just Shepard has the boldness in mankind to remove his cover and show the Neanderthal his standard hairy face, permitting the unfortunate individual to dive into a quiet helpful rest after the researchers. Assemble in a different room and examine the future destiny of Neanderthal. They comprehend that for an astonishing revelation, basically the Nobel Prize is probable for them in the cold. The group is contemplating a cryoprotectant to freeze all malignant growth patients later on and thaw them when humankind tracks down a solution for the sickness. Presently, on account of the Iceman, they will actually want to sort out some way to continue to live body cells at very low temperatures and freeze individuals to acquire eternality. Shepard doesn't uphold the excitement of his partners and accepts that an individual shouldn't live everlastingly on the grounds that the planet is, as of now overpopulated researchers choose not to express anything to columnists for the present, so their fine won't be transformed into the star of A. Program or business the anthropologist recommends first concentrating on the Neanderthal in a regular habitat and with his assistance to more deeply study the ancient world shepherd figures out how to ask the group for a very long time for his own exploration, an exceptional vivarium is being set up. For the Iceman, which is loaded up with different creatures and plants so the Neanderthal can chase and get his own food. The cave dweller awakens in a natural climate and approaches his standard business. To begin with, he finds berries and extracts juice from them to extinguish his thirst. Afterward, the Neanderthal pursues the bird away from its home and takes the eggs from it before sundown. He ignites a fire with two stones and prepares food on it the following day, after a morning shower under a cascade, the Iceman goes chasing after a wild hog.
He deceives it to go into a cavern and skewers it on a shoddy lance while fishing a Neanderthal takes a host for prey and hauls it out of the water. As opposed to his assumptions, the thing ends up being a palatable then the man sees that the host extends the entire way to the stone and goes along it to a mysterious metal entryway. The Stone Age man rapidly separates the entryway and find a few research facility colleagues and creatures in confines behind it, terrified researchers figured out how to close the section with an extraordinary so the Neanderthal doesn't get inside the lab. From what he sees. The Stone Age man becomes incensed he begins shouting and attempts to punch the wall out with his clench hands, one of the lab colleagues needs to shoot him with a sedative dart. After that researchers take the savage to the working space to take extra tissue tests. Shepard attempts to safeguard the Iceman's on the right track to be treated as a human and not a logical example. He reminds the researchers that they guaranteed him to concentrate on the Neanderthal land. Prevented for a very long time. Accordingly, Dr. Brady says that they ought to exploit the way that the savage was made at lights out time at night, Shepard shows Dr. Brady a tape of his perceptions of different clans all over the planet. The video shows them showing incomprehensible actual capacities, their skin is by all accounts insusceptible to fire and some other real damage. The anthropologist accepts that Stone Age man culture might give pieces of information to the investigation of the versatility of the human body. Referring to services, for example, strolling ablaze, Shepard in the end convinces the associate to give them access to the Stone Age man so he can attempt to lay out contact with him. The anthropologist enters a Neanderthal man's safe house without a weapon or defensive suit, the cave dweller attempts to drive the interloper away, yet Shepard notwithstanding his trepidation, steadily shuts the distance between them. Interest takes over in the Neanderthal drove Shepard near him and cautiously looks at him. He later pushes the researchers to the ground to do his own examination. In the wake of ensuring that the outsider isn't perilous and truly basically the same as himself. Neanderthal chooses to make contact he jabs his chest and presents himself as Sinju, after which Shepard calls him Charlie the anthropologist additionally gives him his name. The Stone Age man utters fundamentally the same as sounds accordingly, clarifying that he recollected the name of another colleague, the anthropologist sees that the scars on the Neanderthal's chest overlap into the example of an enormous bird. The mountain man makes different sounds and attempts to clarify something for Shepard, yet the specialist finds it challenging to grasp him. Altogether not to lose the headway made in speaking with the Neanderthal, researchers choose to utilize an expert language specialist Mabel, scientists start recording Shepard's discussions with Charlie on tape. After which an etymologist breaks down the accounts and attempts to translate them, she attempts to find rationale in the savage's discourse and figure out how he develops sentences during the time spent correspondence. Men let each know other the names of things around them like a stone, a frog, or fastens on the anthropologist's shirt. One night, Shepard starts to murmur a tune tapping a piece of wood on a stone. The Neanderthal truly prefers the tune and requests that his new companion continue to sing. Before long the mountain man gets into the musicality such a lot of that he starts to chime in with the researcher. In the middle between correspondence, researchers lead their own examinations with the Neanderthal, they attempt to recognize the cryoprotected in his blood by holding Charlie an outrageous virus on account of this substance, they will actually want to freeze individuals for quite a long time. In any case, the trials don't bring the ideal outcomes, and during one of the tests, they nearly killed the Neanderthal back at the vivarium Charlie hollers at Shepard, understanding that he is being probed. He needs to be liberated from torture and request that the anthropologist kill him, however the researcher won't make it happen. Shepard asks Dr. Brady to assist him with speaking with the Neanderthal. He accepts that contact with a female will assist with finding totally new characteristics and Charlie, and this will assist with considering and better after much influence. Diana at last consents to enter the cave dweller's hideaway, was Shepard Charlie looks at and sniffs Dr. Brady with interest in Neanderthal then, at that point gets the scared lady a bug and attempts to mate with her shepherd comes to Brady's guide and disallows Charlie from contacting the lady clearing up for the Neanderthal that she is his better half. The Iceman runs into the cavern and brings Shepard the sparkly hose thing he offers to exchange the thing for Dr. Brady however, as again rebuked on the following visit. Charlie is feeling perfect and researchers figured out how to discover some new information about him. He draws a lady and two little men and starts to talk eagerly about them in his own language. The researchers understand that Charlie is discussing his family and needs to know where they have gone during a discussion. A helicopter floats over the straightforward top of the vivarium, which extraordinarily invigorates the savage he starts to scale the fake rocks to find a marvel bird. 
Nonetheless, researchers have previously provided the request for the helicopter to take off and not upset the Neanderthal shepherd again met with the Eskimos to gain from them the old legend of the bird, the courier of the divine beings they call the got a name basically the same as what Charlie shouted to a flying helicopter. As indicated by legend, a huge bird ought to convey an individual to paradise and give harmony and everlasting satisfaction. In any case, on the off chance that he trespassed, the bird will rebuff him for his transgressions and take him to a totally better place. For instance, the obliteration of one's own clan can be viewed as a wrongdoing shepherd suspects that some time ago, there was an environmental calamity on the planet and all creatures vanished from the region where old individuals used to reside. Then Charlie chose to speak to the heavenly bird and proposition it to forfeit himself in return for returning the prey to the earth and saving his clan from starvation to speak with the divinity. The Neanderthal dove into a profound daze and awakened currently on the surgical table in the research facility. At the point when Charlie saw a helicopter overhead, he concluded that this was his heavenly bird. Presently he can't imagine anything more yet saving his clan. After this occasion, the Neanderthal quits discussing even with Shepard, and for a few days attempts to place himself in a daze once more, he spreads out before him gifts for a proposing to the god and draws old images on the skin. Researchers need to help the savage yet don't have any idea what can deliver him once again from his state. At the point when Shepard visits Charlie, he subtly watches him and attempts to sort out how he opens the entryway. Then, at that point, the savage tracks down the button from the entryway and gets inside the research center. He warily strolls the quarters attempting to find an exit from the structure. Seeing his appearance in the mirror. The Neanderthal is exceptionally terrified and breaks the glass, then he gets into a room with creatures kept in an enclosure and runs out of it with sickening apprehension, the savage is scared by in a real sense, all that he meets on the way a printer, a lift and unusual elixirs and glass carafes. In this way, when one of the researchers impedes him, he quickly surges in. And afterward pierces him with a lance. The researcher figures out how to sound the caution, and Charlie figures out how to escape the lab, thrilled he tumbles to the ground and contacts the snow. Unexpectedly, he sees an oncoming helicopter and attempts to draw near to it. In any case, during a turn, the machine unintentionally raises a ruckus around town, and he blacks out. Charlie has gotten back to the lab, and the researchers are feeling quite a bit better to observe that he is safe after what happened he ought to turn into a guinea pig for researchers without the right to opportunity. Shepard needs an alternate destiny for Charlie and demands that he in his quest for the heavenly bird and of any expectation of saving his clan. However the specialists would not help the savage and eliminate the anthropologist from research, then Shepard haggles with a gathering of caring researchers to help the Neanderthal get away from the lab I saw Shepard strolls with Charlie through the blanketed desert. A caution is sounded in the lab, and individuals on snowmobiles and a helicopter are shipped off look for the criminals seeing that extremely large bird overhead. The Neanderthal captivated goes towards it. Shepard attempts to stop Charlie however the snow falls between them making a pit when the helicopter drops excessively low. The savage takes hold of it and takes off one of the pilot's attempts to drag Charlie into the cockpit, yet the savage has different plans. He is cheerful in light of the fact that he has at last tracked down his divinity and is prepared to forfeit himself Charlie and holds his hands and tumbles down happily. Shepard watches his flight and cheers for his companion who at last figured out how to satisfy his fantasy and gain hotly anticipated opportunity.